what I want to do today is see if I can fix this device. It's the Apex Digital DT250 Digital TV Converter. What it's doing right now, you can see this is one of these devices that takes HDTV and in this case can put uh, composite output. And what it's doing is the power light is on and when I try to turn the device on like it's in standby, it'll, you'll see it'll just, the power light just uh, flickers a bit and it causes the screen on the on the composite monitor to flicker as well. So it just uh, it just went bad sometimes. I had been using it for years and it was working quite well. So let's see what we can do about that. So I had the device uh, open before and uh, you can see that there's a, there's a board over here with some chips and that's where the composite is. The power comes in over here from the mains and there's a power supply with a transformer, some caps and stuff. And uh, what I can see from looking at this device here is you can just see it here. That looks fine. That cap looks fine. That cap looks fine. This cap, though, it's uh, it's uh, rounded up on the top. Uh, the crosshair shows up a place where in an uh, electrolytic capacitor it can relieve pressure in case the thing is going to blow up. It'll just open up on the top and the electrolytic uh, liquid uh, will come out. Uh, so this suggests that, the, that that cap is bad. It... Um, it probably got too hot. Uh, sometimes electrolytic caps over a while, they'll uh, create more and more resistance, and that will cause the device to become too hot. The electrolytic will, will expand or even uh, boil, and uh, that would burst. So that, that's what I'm suspecting is the problem. You can see I just have this uh, on a piece of plastic right now because I already had it open and cut the mounting screws off, but uh, let's see what, what we can do there. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to disconnect it from the mains power. There we go, and now we should be able to take some of these apart. Connect, disconnect the, uh, the composite there, and as I said, this board is just separate. I just had the plastic in there to keep it. Uh, isolated from the middle case. Let me disconnect the power here. And take it out. It's got this header here, which connects it to the front panel, and then another header connected on the logic board over here that we should be able to pull. And now we have the power supply. Free. So we don't need that part right now. So here's what we're looking at. And that cap is hard to read. Uh, looks like it's the same thing as the other ones. Uh, 470 microfarad, uh, 25 volt capacitor. Um, pretty easy to get at the other side. I'm just going to desolder that and replace it with a similar component. What I purchased to replace that is, uh, is this capacitor. Um, this is a Panasonic, uh, basically a higher quality capacitor. Because what I'm hoping is that it was just something about they compromised in the design of the of the board, or the voltage got a little higher than it expected, and so I got instead the 470 microfarad 35 volt. Uh, also electrolytic capacitor. It's in a slightly larger format, but uh, we'll see if we can get it in there. And if it doesn't fit in the same place, we'll uh, leave the legs a little longer and see if we can just um, mount it a little differently. I've got um, my soldering iron um, warming up, and it's up to uh, 720 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a reasonable temperature for rosin core uh, solder. Now this is only a 25 volt cap, so it shouldn't have more than 25 volts across it, but just let's see where it is on there. Right, looks like it's right here. Let me just insulate it and short across there. What I'm struggling a bit to do is find the best tool I can use to hold the cap so that I can pull it away from the board when I'm desoldering it. Now I've got a pretty good grip on there. Let's see how this works. I've got one leg. Let's move a little bit here. Let's see if we can do something. So 
Where did I get the other one? So the other thing I did is I turned the uh, heat on the iron up a little bit to 760 Fahrenheit. All right, so now there's a little bit of solder still. Uh, you can see on those pads right there. And uh, removed it over on this side. And what you want to do, these are polarized, of course. So the side with the stripe uh, is was towards the transformer. And I'll take my new component even though this is a bigger component it looks like it just might fit in i think i might just drop the legs down most of the way kind of bend it over so it's got a little bit of a headroom there so just for the sake of making this job a little easier i'm going to clip these legs to the same length what keeps happening is i'm so slow and i didn't set the timeout on my uh digital soldering iron so what it keeps doing is going into uh, standby mode and cooling off so that's why I'm not that's why the solder isn't flowing so I'm just gonna get the temperature back up to 740 Fahrenheit it's climbing up right now all right back up to temp here so now we should be in business we got that one let's do this one over here Right, got that component in there. What I'm going to do now is just so it has the same clearance as before, I'm just going to ease this over this way, like that. There we go. See, so now we're only about the same height as some of the other caps in there. And what we're going to do is uh, clip those leads right there. And I think uh, I think we're ready to ready to put this back together. All right, so there's where we are. We can start mounting things back in here. Okay, so yes, the moment of truth. Does this thing work now? Power it up. Sure enough, it does. the uh, real control here go into the menu and uh, we're good to go so this is about a, a what nine or ten year old uh, HDTV tuner that I use with uh, my old composite monitor down here by my bench and uh, looks like we got it working again uh, by replacing a cap